Hello, welcome to Board Deck and Dice. Today we are going to be reviewing Alien Artifacts, which is the latest game from Portal, billed as a 4X card game. Let's see if it takes that billing and runs with it, or merely walks in a different direction. So, I'm going to talk through some of the components and cards of Alien Artifacts. It does come with uh, these kind of board uh, helper file, helper cards, which have um, quite a lot on. They have all the turn, all the things you can do on your turn, all the um, icons, and on the back it tells you the uh, what each thing does on its logistical and... Um, operational side which I'll talk about later but basically all the fighters will do one of these things depending on what type they are and one of these things on the other side the uh, planets on their operational side produce three resource cards uh, and on their logistic side will make things cheaper essentially tech is different because it's kind of wild powers and end game scoring but we'll come to that uh, this is the score sheet, it has the round tracker on the bottom and basically you'll advance the round tracker every time you burn through the resource pack. So once you have um, need to shuffle the discard pile, that advances the round on. Once you've done it last time, you play until everyone's had the same amount of turns. Each faction comes with a player board and a setup and power sheet. So these have unique powers and unique setups and there's one for each one. I've got a few more because there was a promo pack included. Uh, things to know are your credit tracker down here, keeps track of your money and this side of the board is called under construction. So any planet, technology or fighter you'll buy will go this side first. When you can afford the, to, the resources to take it over and to put it into your empire to build it, discover it or construct it, you will choose to keep it on the same side up or to flip it to its operational side. So all of those three cards have a white side, which is its logistic side, and on the back they have a dark arty side, which is its operational side. And they do different things depending on uh, what type they are. Generally, the logistic side will have an ongoing power that benefits you in some way, and the other side will be uh, allow you to attack, allow you to get some scoring and potentially end game scoring, or uh, give you more resources. So that is the uh, player card. So just for example, you might have a fighter there, a technology there, and a planet there. You might decide to put the planet over this side um, to reduce the cost of technology. When you set technology over, you might flip it to that side, and the fighter, again, you might uh, decide, depending on the power, to play it that side or that side. Once it's on this side, if the fighter has to come back because it's damaged, then um, you leave it on that side. But that you make the choice when you pay. To move anything across, initially, always costs five credits. So to buy any, any of these cards from the stacks in the middle will cost you five credits. To move them across to the Empire side will cost you five of that colour resource. So to move a ship across will cost you five uh, of the ship resource, which is red, they're all colour coded, five of the blue resource, five of the green resource. Uh, once you've got something across there, it goes up by one. So this one costs five, the next one will cost six, seven and so on. But you can modify that. For example, the planet down here um, lets you reduce the cost of developing a technology by two and they stack so you can have loads of those but then you're foregoing the operational side. So that's kind of how it works. Every action in the game um, that's powered by resources can be powered by the same colour of resource or the wild resource which is yellow apart from these three actions here. So I'll talk through these first, and these must be done with the correct colour, no wild actions. So when you've got some ships out on their operational side, and these all need operational uh, cards to be of any worth. When you've got some ships, you can start an offensive and choose a target, either another player or an alien system, and you will attack that target with every ship. Each ship will resolve uh, separately, but... Um, 
they that all counts as one attack. If you attack another player, you'll be attacking a defense plan, either the basic one or one from the defense plan deck if they have managed to gain one. Basically, what you do is to resolve an attack is you flip over the top of the resource deck and you look at the number in the middle. Then you find the number on there. Sorry, keep bashing the microphone. You find the number and you um, take that action. So these are actually both the same. Place two blockade tokens on any defenders. Blockade tokens are simply these. They go on a card and they stop that card from being used as an action unless you pay one credit. You can remove blockades, um, but it costs you a go and a resource to do. So, so the alien systems are basically the same, except they have uh, chances to get alien artifacts and victory points. Again, look at the number, go to the number on the chart. There are, there are, um, being a bit clumsy today, there are ways of modifying those as well. So you can modify those numbers with different, uh, different options. So that is uh, the operational start offensive. The gain revenue one, you will look at every card that has uh, a scoring is on its operational side, side in the technology one. And you're looking at this first column. The second column is end game scoring. And if you have three of each in your empire, either side up, you are, you are in line to score that. You'll definitely score that at the end of the game, but you might score that under a gain revenue card. And again, you flip the resource card and you're looking not at the colours on the top, but the little grey symbols underneath. There'll be two on each one. And thankfully for this one, we've matched, so we would score one victory point. If we didn't match, we would not score this row. So, once you've got a few of these out, taking gain revenue action not only gives you chance to score some victory points, but also burns through the deck quickly if you're worrying about anyone catching you up. The mine the planets action, that's probably the simplest of each. Uh, any planets you have out, you draw a card and you use it as a resource. You can only use one side of the card, so you took it under the side um, that there's rules for it. Basically, if you match the symbol, it must go that side. If you don't match the symbol, you put the least. If they're both drawn, you choose. In this case, it would go like that. And they are resources that I can then use. Uh, so those are the three operational actions which you can't use uh, gold for. So on your turn you're going to be taking one of a variety of actions. You will be either buying a card, a ship, or a, or a planet. Sorry, buying a card. So that's a ship, a planet, or a technology. The ones we've looked at. Ships, planets, technology. Any of those cost five credits unless you've got any modifiers. You are going to turn those into things in your empire by moving them across. Again, five of the resource between that colour and gold, um, plus one for everyone over there, minus your modifiers. You can trade resources, which means you can trade uh, resources of the same colour for credits with the bank. You can remove blockade tokens and you can prepare resources. To prepare resources, you are just taking a card on your side, let's say we've got this one, and deciding for the future to tuck up to two cards under there for future use. Now the reason you might want to do this is because there is something called an assembly limit. The assembly limit means that in general you can only use two resource cards for any action to trade, to develop, to build a ship, to construct a technology, or to discover a planet. So when you took these under here on the under construction side, they do not count towards your uh, assembly limit. So if you've got a couple of threes under there, and you've got, you know, you need to spend 10 over here to get this out, then you've got six already. Any resources on the Empire side tucked under a planet do count towards your assembly limit, so you can't use them on top of two cards from your hand. So, resources are a big deal. Let's talk about resources and how they work. You will have a hand of three resources, and you'll notice that resources have uh, two sides to them. So we're ignoring the numbers and the grey symbols now. We're just looking at these. You must use a resource of the same colour. So in this, ca this case, I could use five red, three green, 
or four green. You only use half, the top half or the bottom half of the card. And with the assembly limit, you must only use uh, two unless you have any tucked under or some of the ships will increase your assembly limit. For example, um, Old Earth, increase your assembly limit for the trade action by one. So when you trade in to get credits, you could use three cards. There's also a gold or yellow um, symbol, which is wild. And that can be, for any of the basic actions, that can be used as any colour with another colour. It can also be used in trade action to get credits. You will play through the game until you burn through the uh, resource deck, the required amount of times for your play account. And then you will count up your victory points in forms of cards in your empire, one for each. You will um, take your end game scoring from any of your technology cards that are on the operational side. And you will look at the back of your starting card, which will give you some end game scoring as well. One of the, the name of the game is Alien Artifacts, and one of the uh, big game changing cards in the game are the alien artifact cards which you'll generally get by using your unique power for your faction they all kind of do the same thing and that's get you an alien artifact or by winning um, a battle with a three or a four against some of the alien systems these are game changing things that can be played at any time or uh, instantly or at another time they do things like all other players lose four credits Gain credits equal to the credits lost. There's one that lets you take three turns um, at, in a row. There's one that lets you uh, draw two and add one straight to your empire without paying it. There's one that lets you take two by actions without paying. So they're really powerful cards um, and, and worth getting, particularly if you get the ones that let you take extra goes. So that is a brief look at Alien Artifacts. Um, let's go back and see what I think about it. I um, like Alien Artifacts. It has a undoubtable charm about it. I like the 51st State Imperial Settlers style um, player, player board where you're having cards that you're building out to your empire. I like that the cards have a logistical side and a operational side which gives you choices. Um, I really like the way the resources work. Uh, 51st State is one of my favourite games, but there is an element of fiddliness when you're taking those resources out and putting them back and taking them away and moving them here, um, which this game doesn't have because it's all done on those cards. And I think that's really clever. The way the cards are used for multiple things, um, but if you're last, or losing, you don't want to use those cards for multiple things because you don't want to burn through the deck too quickly. I think that's really clever. The combat is interesting. It doesn't really feel like combat, I guess. I guess it just feels like you're testing your luck against something. You can get modifiers that uh, uh, adapt your number between one and four, but you're only going between one and four. Um, it does what it does, you know, uh, and I think that's perhaps the issue with the game or what might be a potential issue for some people is that it, this 4x billing, it's not 4x in anything other than um, kind of theme or a, or a love letter. So each of the cards, uh, the planets, the um, technology, the ships, they all, all have a category which will either be exploitation, ex exploration, expansion or extermination. Got them all right! Um, but that is it. Um, it doesn't feel like when I'm turning a planet card over from my under construction to my empire card, it doesn't feel like I've discovered that planet. It just feels like I'm building my engine. Um, so yeah, it's not not 4x, it's an engine building, tableau building game, but it is a good one, one that I enjoy. I'm still trying to work out whether I rate it better as 51st than 51st State. I think so far for me, the combos that I've been able to do in 51st State have been more impressive than I've been able to do in Alien Artifact, yet the speed of play in Alien Artifacts is incredible. You only get one of those actions each turn, and by the time your turn comes round, 
you know what you want to do. All the actions are viable. If you're left with nothing to do, get trading in and getting credits is always worthwhile because you can buy more cards. You can get planet cards that reduce the effects of uh, the price of buying those cards to one. So each turn you can, you know, pretty much pay the one. I don't think I said in the overview, but every one that you pay more in credits lets you take another card and then you can choose from those. So you can start looking through for the ones you want or the ones that you need for your empire. Uh, certainly you cannot ignore the blue cards because they are, uh, apart from your individual end game scoring, they are where all your points are going to come from. And there's a question of whether you just start turning them over to the operational side and forgoing the instant points right then to aim for something for the end, or you keep a few back on your, on your under construction side so that when you build them you get a chance to score then and later on. But certainly once you've got a few operational side up technologies, um, you can start hammering and spamming that um, earn revenue I think it's called, the one that lets you trigger off all those time and time again because there's a double benefit there. Not only are you potentially scoring victory points, but you're also um, speeding through the deck. If you've got four of those, uh, you spend your five resources and then you're going to draw a card for each of those, uh, potentially scoring victory points, then you've burnt through six resources on your go and your go is going to come round again and everyone else is going to be drawing from that deck and suddenly that deck that looks big, I think it's 82 cards, suddenly shrinks for the other players when they're trying to catch you up. Alien Artifact cards is uh, my biggest question of the game um, because we, I've come across one that I think might be unbalanced um, and in our first go it came out on the very, the very last turn a player uh, got an Alien Artifact card and it let him take three more turns and he won the game and no one could reply because that was the last turn of the game. So yeah, I would have won if it wasn't for that so that felt a bit you know unfair and we, we talked about it with the, with people when we played the other when we played the game again and this card came up again but the guy saved it for his last turn so I wonder if that one's a bit too powerful the others seem powerful but not as powerful as that one and and um, the second time I saw it used I don't think it won the game it wasn't so bad but uh, certainly that is one to be aware of um, and I think if your strategy was just to try and get as many alien artifacts cards as you could you're going to have, have quite a few options available to you um, and that could be worth doing. So I just question the balance of those a little bit. Um, but apart from that, like I say, I really like it. A really quick engine building game. The intimidation factor is quite high. There's loads of sets of cards, loads of um, icons and the help, the, the guides. Um, Actually, I think they make that worse because they've got everything on and it's double-sided and it's all crammed on. When you start playing, ultimately, it is a simple game where you're taking one turn and going. And that is the best way to get into it. Just start the game. Your first few turns are going to be similar. You're going to be buying a card. You're going to be trying to get the resources you need to uh, put that card into your empire to start doing things. Uh, so the intimidation factor is there. Um, the rule book is okay okay not the best um, and there's one thing that wasn't mentioned until the back page and I was like uh, the back page is just the kind of things you should know things to remember quick guide play so I didn't really look at that and then I was like what happens if my ship gets damaged and it is actually on the back page if your ship gets damaged it just returns to under construction um, but I felt like that should have been in the main game so uh, yeah, and, and also fighting other players, putting that blockade on, it's not as damaging as in 51st State when you raise someone's thing because that's out of the game. This is, this is still in the game, you'll still score points right at the end, you just can't use that action unless you pay one credit to use it every, you know, every turn you want to use it, you play a credit, or you pay two resources to remove it. Um, so attacking each other can be worth it if someone gets ahead, someone gets those blue cards and starts triggering that, start putting blockades on their blue cards, but they can remove them all in one go if they get lucky. So yeah, uh, so intimidation factor is high, rule book medium. It is a lot of fun. Um, there is 
obviously the luck of drawing cards is always going to come into play. Um, that is particularly with the alien artifacts because once you get a few rounds through the game and you've reduced the cost of buying cards, you can overspend to look at more. So you generally can whip through a few, decide what you want and put the rest at the bottom. And generally everything is quite helpful towards your empire. It might not be helpful towards your goals, but then that's testing you in the, in the goals that you want to do. So there is luck, uh, as is always the case in um, games with cards. But I don't feel it... I felt like that was part of the game. It's part of the, almost the part that most fits into the exploration. Uh, the exploration. You know, you're exploring, seeing what ships you come across, what schematics you find, rah, rah, rah. Um, but for me, I enjoy that. Um, it doesn't ruin the game. I certainly feel that the times I've lost have been because of the things I prioritise rather than the look of the draw. Apart from that overpowered take three turns card. But then I was trying to draw it, so, you know. Uh, so a lot of fun. Um, would I add it to my collection? I've gone back and forth on this because I'm like, do I need this in 51st State in my collection? I would add it to my collection. I don't think it will replace 51st State. And if I got to the point where I have too many games and one needs to go, probably Alien Artifacts would go before that. Um, that might change after I play them both more, but that's just my general feeling at the moment. If you want a good tableau building game, engine builder game with uh, lack of fiddle, fiddliness, then this is very, it could be one to look at for you. Alien Artifacts, excellent game, uh, recommend it, particularly if you're a fan of those systems. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time on Board, Deck and Dice.